Well, I'd like to thank first the organizer for the opportunity. And I'm going to talk a, a bit of this emergent collective motion in interacting grounding particles. And there's this other area of oh, this work was uh, done in collaboration with uh, Francisco Semilla, which is in the audience. And this area covers what in the literature is um, known as active matter. And, and these kind of uh, agents are called also active Brownian or self-propelled particles. And we can find them in many different systems. And the idea is to, is to study the kind of uh, collective motion they develop out of local interactions. <laughs> And there's some even some applications for search and rescue with using like a lot of these uh, robots that interact um, with very simple rules. So uh, the main um, interest on this topic is that uh, sorry, local interactions lead to emergent collective motion where the group moves as an individual with certain properties. And this implies a condensation in velocity and proposition spaces. And in 1987, uh, this guy, which is a computational system engineer, I guess, uh, was asked to develop a um, simulation for a flock for a movie, a CGI, and then he uh, came up with these three um, basic flocking behavior uh, rules, which is the alignment that particles try to align their their, their velocity, uh, centering that they try to stay together as a group, so they feel some sort of attraction to the center of mass or something, and they tend to avoid uh, collision, so they, that's called separation. And like about 10 years later, in 1995, Bisek um, and collaborators developed a very simple model to, to study this from the point of view of physics. So it's a discrete model in space and time, and particles move with a constant speed. And the, this U is the direction of their, their motion. Well, this is uh, the one new version, but we would have something like this for No, this is actually new. And there is this uh, interaction, and uh, he only considers alignment among the velocity of the particles. There are point particles that can um, cross over each other, and they are subjected to an um, angular noise. So they have some sort of uh, a noise in the angle. And what he saw is that um, there is this transition to collective motion from an order state when the noise is absent, all of the particles start to move in the same direction. This is a, just an order parameter which is proportional to the mean velocity of the center, uh, the mean velocity of the group, normalized by these V naughts. And as the amplitude of the noise increases, then there is this transition from an order state to a disorder state in even one or two dimensions. And the thing is that it doesn't violate, for instance, the Merlin wagner hockenberg theorem that tells us that you cannot break a continuous uh, symmetry out of local interactions in one or two dimensions. But this system is out of equilibrium, so that theorem doesn't apply here. And let me show you some of the states that you can observe. So this would be like a disorder state, and this would be like an order state. But an interesting thing happens when you start to look at larger and larger systems in terms of the size of the, the system compared to the interaction values, because these particles interact locally, just with a few particles around uh, within a circle. And uh, when you increase the size of the system, there are at least two ordered phases that can be identified. This, would, this is a snapshot 
of the system in a two-dimensional system. And this will be like a density field. So you can see the, how this dense band, bands of um, particles develop that are ordered within themselves and they are moving to the, to the right. And the rest of the particles that you can see in the background there is like a disorder gas of particles. Here's another example where these banded structures develop. That would be one of the one kind of order state, and the other one would be more like a homogeneous order state. And the other thing that was noticed in this kind of out of equilibrium order states is that uh, there is a uh, scaling of the <coughs> standard deviation of the fluctuations. Those, uh, if you would have a like a disorder homogeneous state, the scaling of the, the uh, density would go uh, as a power law to with an exponent of one half. But when you have one of these out of equilibrium disorder states, it goes uh, the exponent is larger between one half and even one. So these are some of the characteristics of these characteristics of these out of equilibrium ordered phases that can be appreciated, for instance, in this simple model. So since then, there's been a, like, an explosion of uh, interest in these kind of systems. And they have been, it has been thought that the, having self-propelled particles or active ground particles is one of the important ingredients to get this transition to collective motion. So, Francisco and I ask the question, what happens if you drop the self-propulsion? Is it really necessary to get a transition to collective motion or not? So we uh, developed this simple model. We started with a uh, the line of description for ground and motion for each of the particles we get by basically uh, we have a grounding particle and we introduce this force which is the aligning force. So when this force is zero, what we have is a gas of grounding particles. The distribution of the, their velocities corresponds to that of the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. But the interaction that we proposes is this one, which can be cast in this other form. So what it does is that within a, a radius of a finite size, a particle interacts with its neighbors, and it just tries to align its velocity with the direction of its velocity with that of its neighbors. But this force, the resultant of this force is of the plane it's perpendicular to the plane where the particles are moving. So it only provides a torque to the particle to rotate on its own axis to be able to align its, its velocity with that of its neighbors, but without affecting its speed. So we wouldn't introduce an interaction, some sort of self-propulsion. We want to keep them uh, without self-propulsion and see if we can um, observe this transition to collective motion. Um, the, the, our model can be also written in this form in polar coordinates. And as you can see for the velocity, um, we have these two terms that act as sort of a thermal propulsion. And in some other models, this term would be some sort of like a Van der Waals, uh, not in the friction term that drives the speed of the particle to a given value. We don't have that. We have this. And it's coupled to the um, equation for the angle or the direction of each one of the particles. This one kind of resembles the Kuramoto model of synchronization. <coughs> so what we observe is that Yes, we can, without self proportion, have a transition to collective motion from a state which is disordered, but in our case, keeps the properties of thermal equilibrium. I mean, the particles in that case, even with the interaction turned on, they perform diffusive motion, and the distribution of their velocity is that is that of Maxwell Boltzmann. Actually, we have two time scales that are competing. One is the thermal fluctuations that the particles undergo because of the thermal back. 
and the other is the aligning rate. So how fast they can align with the, their neighbors. So when one wins, we have the disorder phase, and when the aligning rate is fast enough, uh, you start to see collective motion with the uh, uh, net speed different from zero. This is just another parameter. And we plot it uh, as a function of different densities of the group. And this is the stationary state uh, order parameter. So this is, would be the instantaneous one, and this is the accumulated one in the stationary state. Okay, so these are some of the states that we can observe in our system from the disorder to the order one. And also this would be like for a small size system, the interaction radius for this for all of the cases is about one and the size, linear size of this system is in this case 48. But when we start to increase the system, then we start to observe also these structures like banded order uh, structures that are moving in this case like upwards and a sea of uh, Brownian or a, a gas of disordered particles surrounding these kind of structures. Uh, as you increase the aligning rate, then these bands disappear and you just get like kind of polar liquid which, because it's all moving. But as in the case of the visit model, we also get these giant number of fluctuations or uh, strong fluctuations in the in the density of the particles. In, in density of the particles, we also get something that is known to this out of equilibrium order phases, which is a strong coupling between local density and local order. And the more dense as a region is, the more order it gets. So here in the middle, we have uh, density fields or snapshots of the density of the system, and this would be like the direction fields. So, for instance, for this banded or this band, almost all of the particles have a color between yellow and red. And they are surrounded by a gas of disorder particles, they can point almost in any direction. And it happens, uh, this, is, this happens close to the critical point, but on the order side. And as you increase the aligning rate, these structures disappear. And you just get like a polar liquid. Uh, just, just all of the particles get into the polar, into the liquid phase where they are all moving more or less in the same direction. Uh, regarding the velocity distribution, and the, as I told you, in the disorder side, you get the maximum Boltzmann distribution. It is plotted here, but you cannot distinguish it from the one that we have. And of course, when the, the the system develops emergent uh, collective motion, and the, the black line would be the maximum Boltzmann distribution. The, this would be like the projection of the velocities of the particle along the mean direction of the group and in the transversal direction. And in the end, well, one thing that we get different from the, the model by Isaac is that the in that, in that model, the variance of the, the variance of the fluctuations in the density goes as n to the alpha, proportional to n. It's like a, you can it's like the density you would have in a small region if the system were to be ordered, and, and it's proportional to what well, it was like a power law with this exponent. And the banded uh, region. For the basic model, this exponent is 1, and in the fluid um, phase, that exponent is around 0.8, and we cannot see that in a, either in our banded uh, states or in our fluid states, it's around 0.9, so we don't have to get an explanation for that. We don't, know, we, we don't also see the trains of bands, um, of traveling bands, we just see one band uh, in the banded phase, for instance. The other thing that we also characterize is if we, if we had um, true long-range order, so if this transition is a real transition, and, and through this analysis what we do is to estimate the critical point and subtract it to the, um, 
So these are the parameters and then extrapolate as L increases. And we have two long range order in our system without self proportion. And well, this is just to show um, that there is this coexistence band uh, around across the critical point. So, in conclusion, from this work is that non Hamiltonian interactions like the aligning interaction typically used in, in these blocking models uh, in combination with underdamp dynamics, because our model has underdamp dynamics in the speed and in the aligning interaction, as opposed to some of these. Um, the business the business model you can uh, think of it as an uh, overdamp model in the speed and also in the alignment interaction, but then uh, it has like a nonlinear friction force in here, uh, to drive the particles speed to a constant speed. So it seems that you only need underdamp dynamics and uh, one a non Hamiltonian interaction that will not does not preserve momentum to, for the transition to the collective motion to take place. Uh, so self-proportion is an unnecessary feature to develop long-range or uh, out of local interactions. Uh, our model is also suitable for studying the passage from states where entropy is maximized to stationary phases where entropy is produced because we have the disorder phase which is pretty close to thermal equilibrium as opposed to the other models uh, which are out of equilibrium even in the disorder phase. The distribution of the velocities is not that of the Maxwell proportion. And due to the lack of circular production, our model uh, provides another tool to study the development, stability, and interactions of these traveling order bands, as well as for giant density fluctuations. And thanks for your attention. Yes, um, for the BSEC model, they have done this um, with a vibrated uh, table. They have some disks that have three uh, patas and legs, and, and, and they are not symmetric. So one of them, under these vibrations, performs some, so, some sort of ballistic motion, like cell propel kind of. Then they put a lot of them, and they just crash with each other, but they try to develop this ballistic motion and with the density they develop the collective motion. So we in, in our case it's kind of simpler because you just need like one of these disks to perform a browning motion and the interaction you can probably put like a, a little magnet or something like a type of type of interaction for the other end. And that's why we are thinking to to first model and then try to to do 